Welcome to this bonus review from Smashy Smashy Eggman Movie Reviews and More. Um, I'm a couple days late on this one um, because I went and saw Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the 1956 original. Um, for once, I saw one of these old movies and I can't hold up the case because I've actually never seen it before. <coughs> um, I saw it Sunday. That was a couple of days ago. Uh, I didn't shoot a review that night because I was tired when I got home and I just didn't think of it and I decided to do it now. Uh, you know, because I'm killing time before I have to go do other things. I'm like, eh, whatever, I'll talk about Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Um, so this is the uh, 1956, this is the original, um, starring Kevin McCarthy as our main character whose name I believe is Miles. Um... Basically, um, what this movie is, is it was shot as a B-movie, shot as a low-budget, like no one was supposed to really see it or remember it. In fact, um, at the same time this movie was being made, a big-budget blockbuster, not that they had those back in 1956, but one of the big-budget studio prestige films uh, was being shot that Kevin McCarthy auditioned for and didn't get a role in. Uh, one of his friends did get a role in it, so while his friend was doing this big prestige movie that was going to pay him a lot of money, Kevin McCarthy was off shooting Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Um, the big prestige movie nobody remembers anymore and is forgotten by history, but Invasion of the Body Snatchers is considered an uh, all-time classic. In both the sci-fi, horror, um, black and white, it's, a, it's an all-time classic in the genres to the point where um, when they did the remake in the 80s, uh, Kevin McCarthy reprises his role for a brief moment um, in, in the remake and in Looney Tunes Back in Action, he reprises the role yet again um, for a quick joke during, uh, during a scene in that movie. Um, it became so iconic that that's what he's known for. Even though I know Kevin McCarthy more for his uh, turn in UHF, the Weird Al Yankovic movie, um, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. That's where I know Kevin McCarthy from. I mean, it's kind of weird because he doesn't look like Kevin McCarthy. Like, um, because I've watched UHF and Ghoulies 3 and a bunch of other movies starring Kevin McCarthy, you, I kind of know the shape of his face. And only when he is strung out and uh, going insane from what is going on does he look like that. Otherwise, he looks like the much younger um, version of himself. <coughs> so anyways, what is Invasion of the Body Snatchers? It is a uh, story told... Um, from the perspective of Kevin McCarthy's character. He is in a mental institution, trying or a hospital, he's just in a hospital, trying to convince them of what is going on. Basically, he says he came back from a convention. He is a doctor. He came back from a convention um, so, because he, his nurse called him and told him, all of these people are having issues. They absolutely need their doctor back. He comes back to town to find out not a single person has a problem anymore. Um, none of the people who were saying that they had problems have them anymore. Uh, he begins to discover people who are claiming that their loved ones aren't their loved ones. Um, a boy claims his mom isn't his mom. A uh, woman claims her uncle isn't her uncle. That although they look the same and they have all the memories and they have everything else, they lack the emotion um, that these people had. Therefore, they are not the family members they remember. Um, McCarthy just takes it off as psychological nonsense and doesn't really look into it. He also reconnects with an old love um, who they broke up many years ago when she went off to marry somebody else and he went off to marry somebody else. They are now both divorced. and uh, which They refer to divorce as going to, uh, I think it was Reno. It was either Reno or Vegas. Um, that's... Was the reference for divorce? Oh, I went to Reno. I spent I spent a little while in Reno. Oh, I was in Reno before that. That's how they explain divorce. They went to Reno. Um, so that would be rekindling their love. Uh, one night, he is going to take her out on a date when he gets a phone call at the restaurant from one of his patients saying he needs to come over right away. When he gets there, laid out on this dude's pool table is a corpse. A corpse that has no fingerprints and no identifying uh, face. Like, none of the str- Like, it has a face, but it doesn't have the lines. It's smooth, like a baby. Um, it is decided that, you know, watch over this thing. If anything happens, call him. 
what happens is um, the body gets a face of the dude who called, and him and his wife freak out and run away, uh, which is a reasonable expectation at that moment. Uh, he then goes to his girlfriend's house, discovers there's also one of these things in her basement, which looks exactly like her, and he takes her away from this place. Um, with that, they know something is weird, but when they go back with a psychiatrist and a cop, these bodies are gone. Um, and so they go about their lives until that night. They discover the pods. Um, the aliens come in pods, and they discover them in the greenhouse, opening and forming four duplicates, one for each of these characters. They send the husband and wife away as uh, Kevin McCarthy and his love interest um, try to find somebody in this town who is human, as they now know um, they are, uh, that they're being replaced. Um, he tries to go to his nurse, but his nurse is, this is, might actually be one of the most disturbing scenes. Like, this isn't a disturbing movie, because it's from the 50s, but this is one of the most disturbing scenes, is uh, Kevin McCarthy's nurse, who has just had a baby, and she is now one of the pod people, um, saying that they need to go stick a pod in the baby's room so the baby will become one of them. Like, these things are turning babies into pod creatures. Like, that was the most disturbing... Like, that was... Woo, that was... Like, again, this movie isn't... This is a 1956 movie. There's no gore. There's nothing like that. But it's the context that gets you with these movies. And that was who context. Um, they then flee and hide in uh, Kevin McCarthy's doctor's office where the next day they find out that their friends who they sent away got turned into pod people because what happens is when you fall asleep the pod people absorb your memories and basically your body disintegrates they don't never show it um because they probably didn't have it was a low budget film you don't have the ability but that is what you were told uh they then find out basically the entire town is pod people um who are now taking pods to their friends and relatives and the neighboring communities so they can begin to spread to take over the world. Uh, McCarthy and his love interest escape uh, another potting. They want them to be turned into a pod as they try to stay awake because if they fall asleep, they will become pod people. Um, they run to a mine being chased by the pod people. You find out the pod people came from outer space. Um, it was something came into the atmosphere, landed, and began to grow in a field. Um, and that's where the pods came from, and the pods can replicate any living life. Um, eventually, McCarthy and his love interest hear music, believing uh, it's humans. He goes, McCarthy goes out to investigate, finds out, nope, it's just one of these farms, and they have a radio on. Um, when he returns, uh, his love interest is no longer his love interest. She has fallen asleep and is now a pod person, and was replaced... How she was replaced, I don't know, because there wouldn't have been a pod in the cave. And if it was just taken from one of the other duplicates made of her, those duplicates would have been elsewhere. Unless the when, when the people were searching the mine, they left pods behind just in case. Um, which is what I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume they left pods behind just in case. Because you even have scenes where like people get suspicious of them. And they, like, stick pods in the back, in their trunk of the car, hoping that, you know, those will be the ones that'll get them. Um, so McCarthy is now all alone. He's trying to make it to the highway. When he gets to the highway, he sees a truck carrying pods to big cities. And then we go back to the, um, to the hospital. And this is where you get that great moment of Kevin McCarthy screaming, you know, they're already here. Watch out. They're already here. They're already here. Because he's trying to warn people that the aliens are already here. The pod people are already here and they're trying to take over. Um, we then go back to the hospital. And all the hospital stuff was uh, shot after the fact. The original ending was just supposed to be Kevin McCarthy standing in a freeway freaking out. Um, that the aliens are already here. A very bleak ending that they can't be stopped. It was decided that they needed a not bleak ending. So uh, you find out the truck got into an accident. Spilled the pods. The truck driver is brought in, but he's there's something wrong with him with his phys physiology, and uh, the doctors now believe Kevin McCarthy's story because 
Now they have some type of tangible proof. So they call the, uh, the army and the National Guard to kind of stop the pod people. Uh, it's a great movie. I was really enthralled for the entire like hour and 20 minutes it ran. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was a great movie. And it's one I'm definitely, definitely going to find a copy of and watch again um, at some point, because it was a lot of fun. It, it To the point where, although I had seen the remake, and I really, eh, I was on the fence about the remake, it makes me want to rewatch the remake to see if I can't take something more from it and maybe enjoy it more a second time around. Um, if you've never seen the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, it was a good movie. I really enjoyed it. All right. Thank you for clicking on this uh, video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm Martin Prevost. This is Smashy Smashy Eggman, movie reviews and more, and I will talk to you later. Have a good one.